G'day folks, we've seen some major model updates recently. Claude and Gemini have surged ahead of GPT in coding capabilities, which is pretty cool. Uh, Google Gemini's 2.5 Pro and Flash models are now live with Flash Lite gaining attention for its remarkable speed and cost. So they've gone out of the preview mode and come into no preview. So they're getting high rates on the benchmarks, if you can believe benchmarks. Handling simpler tasks like classifications and translations is uh, pretty good. China's Minimax has released M1, an impressive 456 billion parameter model that is reportedly outperforming Google's Gemini 2.5. And it's got some groundbreaking 1 million token context window that could revolutionize how AI handles complex tasks and lengthy conversations. And interestingly enough, I was thinking that uh, Gemini has got this long context of 1 million and it's not in the chat in your browser. So I started to do a task that needed a lot of context and a lot of conversation. So backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And then Gemini said something went wrong. So Mr. Google, see if you can fix that up. In the business and corporate arena, OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft is experiencing significant tension. OpenAI is pushing to reduce Microsoft's ownership from 49% down to 33%, I think, due to disagreements over intellectual property rights and future profits, and particularly around OpenAI's recent $3 billion acquisition of Windsurf. Despite all these troubles, they're starting to get some penetration into the government with a $200 million contract with the Pentagon highlighting AI's growing role in the government and defense sectors, which, as I record this video, is pretty important at the moment, apparently. There is also major momentum in the research around self-improving AI. The MIT researchers are exploring models that autonomously adjust their parameters and improve with minimal data. While Anthropic has demonstrated impressive gains by deploying multi-agent systems, these systems, whilst coordinating multiple parallel AI agents, have significantly boosted AI performance at the cost of significantly more computational resources. And as someone who experiments a lot with AI and is starting to use an orchestrator in my N8N workflow and using something local on my Olama, something in the cloud with open AI, then something on Claude to see if I can drop the cost of things. It still is costing a bit of money, so I can see why these guys are trying to save money. In some practical AI news, Midjourney has unveiled its first ever video generation model, enabling users to turn static images into captivating animated videos. Google continues to advance conversational AI. How do I get my linen dress to not wrinkle when packing? To prevent wrinkles when packing a linen dress, rolling now, it instead of folding can minimize creases. Natural, real-time voice interactions directly with their search engine. Hey, Mr. Google, find me a restaurant. Mm, okay, I think I've been doing that for a little while anyway. And additionally, Hugging Face, the popular AI platform, has decided to fully embrace PyTorch, one of the frameworks for AI, and they dropped support for the TensorFlow and JAX due to PyTorch's widespread adoption. Meta is aggressively pursuing AI dominance, establishing a dedicated superintelligence division headed by Alexander Wang from Scale AI. Meta has made bold moves, including significant financial investments and offering massive signing bonuses to poach key talent from rivals like OpenAI. Game on, hey? Big money for some. Lastly, Andre Kapathy offered an insightful perspective on the future of AI infrastructure. It's on YouTube. You should take a look. He notes a significant shift from this centralized cloud-based AI models towards these smaller, highly capable models running directly on your, your own device. Now, I'm doing it on my Mac, but my Mac wasn't 
super, super cheap. So it's still not for everybody's day-to-day phone or laptop. But this transition is reminiscent of the historic shift from the mainframe computers to that sort of personal computing. Um, and considering how much money I've spent doing vibe coding or u- using the AIs and the APIs, it's interesting that I'm trying to use more and more stuff on my local computer. Um, and that'll be interesting to see if they can make that work. In the next few weeks, we should see something come out from uh, Grok. This is the Elon Musk grok. And we should see something from the open AI people saying that they're about to release chat GPT-5. And there's been a fair bit of talk about that for the last six months. So we'll be very interested to see that. So we think sometime in July, but we don't know yet. Watch this space for some of this upcoming stuff. That's enough from me. That's AI news. I'll see you next time.